Hello, Red Eye. This is Mike K and Michael Pitt. We're here telling you to go see Eye Origins in the movie theaters July 25th. So I know, Mike, you did some research uh, for this movie. So many interesting things going on in the film, of course. Thank you. How much of the research, I'm not really sure. Is this something people are actually looking into in terms of, like, people having identical iris patterns and, right. what that, and what that would imply? Is that something that is actually going on? Yes, that's something that's actually going on in reality, in real life. And is it being connected to, like, what, in your research, what did you come across as far as where they're at with that and what, what that might mean? There's no conclusions yet. It's all very sort of preliminary. It just happened recently. So, uh, yeah, there was a database of, there is a database of eyes. Iris scanning, a lot of people don't realize, it started in the late 80s, 1987, uh, and has been spreading around the world. It was a great, effective way to uh, capture, uh, to ID a person. It's better than a fingerprint. Because it's an internal organ visible from the outside. It stays the same from birth to death. Um, and to get an iris scan, all you need is a photograph. Mm -hmm. Or like a high-res image. Uh, so, so yeah. There's, I mean, that, that whole, the duplicates thing is new. And people can Google that and look that up. But. I know uh, you're very interested in kind of the way that people feel in the world not wanting to feel alone yeah which would make you guys feel less alone in the world if you knew there was a duplicate you on another planet a la another earth uh -huh. or if you knew that your soul belonged to someone else and would again after you die i uh well they're different things they're they're both existential questions but they're getting at something di different each one and one's eradicating the fear of loneliness or like that, like the fact that we are singular in our POV on the world, and that can be slightly terrifying. Uh, and this film uh, is not about loneliness as much as it is about the fear of death and regret and grieving and loss. Well, I think there's still those notions of like your identity being more than just you right now, though. You know what I mean? What do you think, Michael? Uh, what's the question? Would you feel less alone in the world if you either knew that there was another version, a duplicate version of you on another planet, like in Mike's film on another Earth, or if you found out that your soul had existed before and will exist again? Um, uh, I, if there was like, um, if there was like another me on like another Earth, uh, I'd want to meet him. You would? Yeah, I told. I, yeah, I would totally want to meet him. I'd probably put him to work and I'd be like, "Listen, uh, I am the out in this relationship. I am the alpha. You know? <laughs> Don't mess around. You know, I'm the king of us." Um, so I definitely want to have that conversation. What would you have him as do as soon as possible? Um, what What would I have him do? You know, doing it right now. I would, I would like, um, yeah, actually, you're talking to him. <laughs> then, you're not the number one. Holy shit. That I'm not, but I'm, mind. but, but I'm, uh, but I'm, uh, I'm in the process of, uh, of taking over. Oh, I see. So you're just listening to commands I'd for a while. I'd probably do like, you know, stuff I didn't want to do, like my laundry. I'd make him cook for me. Um, this is just like multiplicity. Multiplicity. Did you ever see that? What, which movie? That now? was the Michael Keaton one where he gets. Uh, oh yeah, I love that one. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good movie. I like Michael Keaton. What the fuck happened to him, man? He's back. He's with Birdman. Oh yeah, he's back. <laughs> Birdman, that's amazing. Birdman. Um. And what's the other thing? Like, oh, oh, this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I'd be into that too, man. I would totally what about you? Him. What would you feel? Uh, I feel like because you could actually interact with the duplicate version of yourself, if you could, that would be a much more tangible way of feeling like you had someone else out there, as opposed to like, ah, oh, my soul's moving on, cool, but I don't really get to meet them. That's what I'm trying to say. One, it's not about loneliness. <laughs> about the, first the problem, the problem is the, the question, self. man. Like the, the, the it's question, a question. Yeah. doesn't really work, does it? No, it really, uh, <laughs> really works. That was a reference from Amadeus. Michael, do you think it's harder to play someone who believes and has a crisis where he starts not believing, um, or the other way around, in this case where your character doesn't really believe, but then is starting to think, well, maybe I should? Do I think it's harder to, <laughs> to um, play a character who believes and then... And then has that belief shaken? Oh, I see. Oh, that's an interesting question. 
Um, mm. I don't think anyone, either one is harder or, you know, easier or harder. Um, it was very interesting to me to play this guy, uh, you know, to play this scientist who whose whole life is based on data, proof, um, and um, who is essentially an atheist, I, I think, you know. Um, it was very fun and difficult and easy and, and you know, interesting to play a character where, where that was being shaken. One of the... Do you know who Richard Dawkins is? Uh, I, I read you talking about him in a, a different interview. But yeah, so like we... Yeah, I think before. We pulled, we pulled some... Yeah, I would totally, like, you know, encourage anyone to, like, YouTube Richard Dawkins, check out some of um, his uh, lectures and stuff. It's, it's a scientist that Mike turned me on to. And then we, we took some things, you know, I, I was, I was, uh, I wanted to take some things from him, actually, who he is, and put it in Ian. The idea was to set up this really strong foundation of someone um, who was uh, so against, you know, the other side, um, with the idea that, you know, thinking that the bigger the bigger the hurdle was the more the release would be at the end of the film when we actually shook you know you know shook up his 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 world yeah and that, that that's a part of um great films that i admire is seeing a, a a character change in some way or get get shaken their ground be disrupted and what i love about the performances in this film and and that sort of climactic moment is it's not doesn't occur through words it's just through looks mm. like you believe changes occurred just by seeing it in the eyes Michael when you were growing up were you as interested in science as, as Mike is or was that not really I was it? kind of like a closet um, you know I, w I was very interested in science um, but I think I think that especially in America I think that uh, for some reason there, there's a stigma about science um, and one of the reasons I was really, you know, to be honest, to be serious, like one, one, one of the reasons I was interested in making this film was to sort of say, um, you know, this is cool. What these guys are doing mm. is, is amazing. You know, you should be interested in, to, you know, in this. And scientists are not people in white coats with no sense of humor who can't talk about music or can't, you know, they're some of the most creative, passionate um, people um, that that you'll meet, you know, and uh, you think that's an American stigma? Like other countries are more receptive. Of, well, of those you know, people? I I mean, <clears throat> I love this country. It's not like you know, but I do I do think that um, you know, without getting too in, you know, it's very political. Yeah, right? yeah, it's it's political. I mean, I'd rather stay away from the the, the politics. I mean, I think in the world, definitely, um, we. Um, I think it's a it's a great sort of mon it's a it's a it's a, it's a you know it's something I stand behind um, to get people more interested in science. I think I think uh, is is a good uh, you know it's a, it's a good message. It interests me, and um, the only reason I say that is because you know we're not we're not doing so good on the world stage as far as like. Um, yeah, right. um, you know, our abilities in science and math and stuff like that. Sure. Um, Michael, you said there are times when it's not encouraged for you to ask questions working on TV. For a film actor, that's basically the opposite. Can you give an example of, of anything you were referring to when you said that? Uh, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> basically, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, an example... Uh, what did I say? Tell me, tell me what I said. Basically, again. you suggested that for an actor, you're not supposed to ask questions working on TV, well, but you are. In it's film. it's it's kind of it's it what 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 that is is uh, it's a very intricate thing. It's you know it would take probably a while to to explain that. You'd, <laughs> you'd have to have like a really good um, I, idea of what those what those things are. But essentially, maybe the easiest way that I can answer that is there are different mediums <clears throat> in the sense where. When you make a film, a director is, it's all about the director, it's about the director's vision. When I sign on to uh, th this film, I had to be clear that Mike had that vision, that he had that vision, 
that he knew how to execute it, and also at, at the, you know, in the end game, someone wasn't going to take it away from him. And I was very clear about that early on. Then when I met the producers on this movie, who are amazing, um, they really um, they they love Mike. They respect they respect Mike, and they're really cultivating him, you know, to his vision. On the television show, <clears throat> very often in my experience, and I've only really spent time on one, was a point in which the director is a person with the least amount of power. So that makes it difficult, uh, I, you know, for some actors. I, I, and, I, you know, I, I think a lot of actors would agree with me that... If you can't ask, you know, if there's a problem or if, 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 you know, in this, I'm asking my questions all the time. And he's written it, he's directing it, you know, and so he's able to um, give direction. If you don't have the power to give direction, it can be a difficult situation. And questions then can be looked upon as problematic. <laughs> Thank you.